In this video, I'm going to show you guys the whole process from start to finish of creating a cut line. And this is a specific cut line that we're creating to use with the Roland printer that we have in the lab. It's a Roland VersaCam, and it has to use a very specific uh, method, a very specific swatch color in order for it to recognize that it should cut and not print. So the first thing that I want you all to do, um, which is something that I've been meaning to have you guys do, is to adjust the size of your anchor points, um, just so that it's easier for you guys to see them when you're adjusting them. Um, so the way we're gonna do that is up here in the Illustrator menu option, you're going to go to Preferences. And then you're going to go down to selection and anchor display and just pay attention kind of notice the size of our bounding box and anchor points currently so you can just see the difference i'm going to change my anchor point handle and bounding box display right here it's defaulting um, it's actually the default is even smaller than what i've got so i'm kind of uh, a little bigger than what the default is but I'm gonna go all the way to max and you guys if max is too big you can adjust it um, but I'm gonna go ahead and have mine go all the way to max and you can see now the size of my bounding box and the size of my anchor points and handles have just gotten much much bigger easier to see easier to work with and adjust so um, now I'm gonna move on to the cut line and this is um, the cut line does not need to get created until your artwork has been finalized, guys. That's very important, okay? So make sure your artwork has not been finalized. I've signed off on it. Your client signed off on it, whatever the situation, because that could impact your cut line, right? So you want to make sure your artwork is ready to go. And you can see over here, you should have a similar setup for your layers. I have a raster layer and I have a vector layer. Okay, and you can see if I turn my eyeball off on that vector layer and I zoom in, you can see that this is that original vector, I mean a uh, raster image that I provided for you guys on D2L. You can see all the pixels, right? So command zero to get back out. Now I'm going to turn off that raster layer, turn on the vector layer just so you can see that from a distance it looked exactly the same right but when you zoom in we've got really clean crisp vector artwork ah love it okay so i am ready now to create my cut line layer and that's super easy uh if you don't have your layers panel already floating um it might look like this for you you can just pull it out and have it floating i like to i like to do that so i can still see my properties panel at the same time as while, while I'm working with my layers. I also like to have my swatches panel open as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my little plus symbol in my layers panel to create my new layer and I'm going to rename it cut contour or cut line is fine as well. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and add the cut contour swatch that I mentioned that is very important and very special to my swatches panel. And I will be giving you guys access to this specific Roland VersaWorks swatch. Uh, so all you'll have to do once I drop it to you guys is go here to your little library symbol in the swatches panel. Go down to other library. And um, just so you don't have to mess with trying to find it, it might be on your desktop, might be in your downloads. I'm just going to go ahead and start typing in Roland. And boom, I've actually got four versions of it. I don't know why, you probably won't see that many. Uh, but you go ahead and say open, and voila, you've got a separate swatch panel now, specific to Roland VersaWorks. You can ignore these three swatches right here. The only one you're going to use is this hot pink one. When you hover over it, you're gonna see that it says cut contour. That little dot in the bottom right corner represents that it is a um, Pantone color it's a spe specific color so i'm going to double click on it so it lives here in my swatches panel and just so you guys can see when you get into it it's clearly defined as a spot color do not change the name it's got to stay just like this and you can see down in your 
uh, CMYK values that it is a hundred percent magenta. Do not change anything in here, okay? Just wanted you guys to see how it's how it's created. All right, so the next step is to create my cut line, okay? Um, and the way I'm going to do that is by reusing my existing vector artwork. That's a lot quicker than having to go around with a pen tool and evenly space uh, around my pumpkin. That would be very time consuming. Um, so the way we're gonna do this is by first hiding our cut, cut layer, cut contour layer, because I'm not gonna mess with it yet. I'm gonna get back on my vector pumpkin layer. And by the way, your raster pumpkin layer, you can just eyeball it off. Don't delete it, just keep it there for reference in case uh, you ever need to refer back to that raster image for whatever reason. All right, so I'm going to now look at my um, shapes, my artwork and ask myself, what do I need in order to create my cut line? And the way I do that, guys, is I just look at all the exterior shapes, all the perimeter artwork. So that's basically everything but the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, right? I need the three ellipses, right? Because that's creating the main pumpkin shape, the body. And I also need my stem, right? Anything that's basically touching the white of the art border that has white um, butting up to it, right? So none of the facial features in this case. Um, with your emoji stickers, it's going to be exactly the same way. Anything that's considered perimeter artwork. So in this case, I have four shapes. I've got the three ellipses and the stem. They're all closed paths. It's very important that you have closed paths uh, when you're combining shapes. So make sure everything is closed. Also, make sure everything is overlapping. So I clearly have overlap here with my ovals, right? But if you look at my stem, it looks like it might be overlapping, but when you really zoom in on that area, there's a little gap, okay? So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. While I'm at it, I'm gonna grab my direct select tool and I'm just gonna pull down on these points until I go past that middle ellipse so that I get that overlap going on, all right? Another reason I like to keep that raster layer is because I'm actually gonna eyeball it on right now just to make sure my curves for my stem are still good. So you can see some of those pixels jutting out. So I'm actually gonna pull this handle out a little to just make sure I'm getting that stem shape right. That's looking good. All right, so I'm gonna eyeball that raster off again. Now I have an overlap and I can see that, right? So the next step is to select this artwork, all of the exterior shapes. And to do that, I could easily use the shift key and shift click all four shapes, right? But um, anytime you have more than two shapes, I like to just drag over them. Just be careful not to get any of those um, facial features uh, because again, we only want the perimeter artwork. So I'm not gonna drag too far down. I'm gonna keep it above those little triangle eyes. Okay, so now I'm ready to copy these shapes. So I'm gonna go edit copy or command C. Then I'm actually going to eyeball off my vector pumpkin layer and eyeball on my cut contour layer. And then I'm gonna actually move on to my cut contour layer, okay? So you can see now I have the cut contour layer highlighted. That means that is the active layer. And so now I'm going to go edit and I'm not just gonna paste it because then it'll just plop it randomly on the artboard. I'm going to paste it in place. And that's very important that you do that, paste in place. Okay, so you can see that I have my four shapes here. And what I'm gonna do next over here in Pathfinder is I'm going to unite all four of these shapes. All you do is click the button and voila, you've got basic your basic cut line here. Problem is, we, we do not want to fill on our, on our cut line, right? Because it should just be a stroke and we need to apply that special stroke color. So let's go ahead and remove our fill. Right here, I got my fill active, so I'm gonna hit none. And then I'm gonna activate my stroke. You can see now it's above the fill. And I'm gonna make sure I'm at one point. I don't want it to be too thick. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and apply my swatch color, my cut contour swatch color. All right, so you may think we're done, and we, we would be if we didn't want a white gap, but on these stickers, I wanna have a little white gap between the 
uh, artwork and the cut line. So in order to accomplish that, we're going to select our cut line. Again, I'm going to uh, just make sure I'm on my cut contour layer and I'm going to go up to object and then I'm going to go down to path and I'm going to choose offset path. Okay. And you're going to get a default number of probably 0.1389 is exactly what I'm getting. Um, I know from prior experience that I want about a quarter of an inch for my offset. Oop, don't need two decimals. So I'm going to throw in 0.25. I got preview check so I can see that that's giving me a little bit more distance. I am very happy with that. If you want more of a white gap, feel free to go up more. Um, just make sure you're working with a positive offset here and not a negative. Say OK. Now at this point, all that's left to do with my cut line is remove that existing original path, right? I don't need it anymore because I created that offset path that is giving me that distance, that little white gap um, that I was looking for. All right, so things are looking good, but the final, final step in order to actually send this to print uh, or create our PDF, which we're gonna um, use to print, must be a PDF when it's all said and done, is to adjust our artboard size. As you can see, my artboard is much bigger than my sticker. And I want all of your stickers to be no bigger than five by five, okay? So I've got mine right under five by five, which is perfect. So uh, let's say your sticker was you know, much smaller than that, or your artwork was much smaller. You can easily go in here, make sure you have maintain width and height proportions selected, right? Because then it'll adjust your um, your height while you're adjusting your width. So let's just say we throw a five in there and boom, you can see it adjusted my height as well. So your height is actually slightly, uh, this is not a perfect um, equal width and height shape here. It's slightly shorter than it is wider, uh, which is fine. I know I've got it mathematically correct because I had my maintain width and height proportions checked over here. All right, then same problem if it was too big, you could just select it all and scale it down. Just make sure you've got that cut contour selected as well uh, so it adjusts it as well. Final step then would be to go here onto your artboard tool and just bring that artboard as close to your cut line as you can get it without it actually touching your cut line. So you can see I'm just getting it. My smart guys are trying to get it to snap to the cut line, which I don't want to do. I want a little bit of a gap. So, you know, zoom in if you need to, to just make sure you're getting it right. That's looking pretty good. Just a little bit of a gap. Okay. We don't want too much space there or else we'll be wasting media. It's very important that you get your artboard sized um, as close to your cut line as possible without touching it. All right. This is looking really good. So I'm going to save and then I'm going to do a um, save as. So I already saved command S, save as, in order to change my format to a PDF. Let's put this on my desktop. And I've got cut line at the end. I'm just gonna change this to, actually let's keep cut line. Let's make sure you add cut line to the end of your file so that you and I know that this is the version with the cut line on it. And we're gonna say save. I always like to have you PDF after saving checked. You don't need to mess with any other settings. That way it just pulls it up one last time for you to double check that everything looks good before you send it to print. And that is all there is to it, guys. I hope you go back to this video and rewatch it as many times as you need um, for a refresher on how to create a cut line.